All right, Coach, why don't you just get us started with an opening statement, and then we'll take some questions. Yeah, obviously not necessarily disappointed in the loss per se, um, disappointed in not giving ourselves a chance and not doing some things that we were in control of. Obviously, Wisconsin's defensive front in particular, it was a long day for our kids. We, we couldn't carve out any space in the run game. We couldn't really protect our quarterback to the, to the level we would like. And we knew that going in with Wisconsin's front seven, which we think is as good as anybody's in the country, and then also with three starting offense alignment not playing, not a good, not a good mix. That being said, we, we were pretty comfortable with that was going to be an uphill battle. What we could control was three interceptions in the first half. What we could control was fumbling a punt. What we could control was better punt, better coverage. That had nothing to do with Wisconsin. We had low line drive punts, and we don't do things in coverage that we're capable of doing. And we're 3 nothing down with five minutes to go in the first quarter, and we're getting the ball. Even if you go three and out there and punt the ball, you're basically 3 nothing at the end of the first quarter, and you have a chance to be in the game for a long time. And that's what we're looking for, to get the game to halftime, see if we could put some pressure on Wisconsin. Maybe we get a couple turnovers. And, and just the opposite happened. We're, we're down 3 nothing, and we're getting the ball. We fumble a punt. We actually hold them to a field goal, and we're down 6 nothing. And then the next possession, we throw an interception, and now it's 13 nothing. And then we turn over again, and it's next thing you know, it's 37 nothing at half. And you don't feel like they're beating you close to that bad. And particularly defensively, they had 21 rushes for 58 yards at halftime. If you had told me that Wisconsin was going to rush for 58 yards after rushing for 14 against Alabama, I'd have told you you're crazy. But And they weren't pushing us around. We were not getting knocked off the ball. We were fitting it. Stave was Stave, whatever his name was, making some plays in the past game. He's a great player. But we were going to stay in that game for a while. But unfortunately, we're down 37 nothing because of self-inflicted wounds. So those are the things that we have to correct moving forward if we have a chance to compete with, let alone win games, to even stay in games. If we turn the ball this week against Cincinnati, it's going to look much the same as it looked last week. So when I watched the tape, it wasn't – I felt like we could play Wisconsin again and it could be a pretty damn competitive game and the score could be a lot tighter. I don't feel like we necessarily have a better team than Wisconsin, but I feel like it could be a pretty competitive game. And I think in a lot of respects – uh, our defense made it, could have made it a very competitive game, but we didn't give ourselves a chance with all the major mistakes. Did you see anything else on tape that you didn't see uh, live, I guess, that struck you particularly? No. I mean, the game really unfolded in about from the 525 mark of the first quarter to about the five minute mark of the second quarter of us. Trying to, if we can just run the ball and punt, or if we can just throw in completions and punt, and make them drive the football, we're probably fairly close at halftime. And now you got a chance in the second half to maybe do some things. And our plan was to play close to the best and not not take a lot of risk and take care of the football. And and obviously, we didn't do that. So that that's a disappointing thing. And does Wisconsin have credit for pressuring our quarterback into some poor decisions? Yeah, on almost all our interceptions, there was pressure. But we also have to take care of the football. You can play a better opponent and not turn the ball over. That's in your control, and we didn't do it. So I, I was excited. I, I would say probably 70% of the defensive snaps, we won the battle for the whole game. I mean, I, even in the second half, we started playing a bunch of young guys. We had seven freshmen, true freshmen on defense at one time on the field, and we're getting stops. You know, and Wisconsin had their backups in, too. I get it, too, but it's Wisconsin backups versus Miami backups, and we're getting stops. So, And we had a lot of kids do a lot of good things on that side of the ball. The, unfortunately, it was 37 nothing because of turnovers and short fields. Sorry. Um, Injury-wise, uh, that's usually uh, a major concern when you're team like Miami is facing a team like Wisconsin. How'd you come out of that? Um, we came out fine. We're hopefully we'll be more healthy when we hit Cincinnati. We got to uh, hopefully gets two of our linemen back this week. Uh, we desperately obviously need that. Would help us majorly if we can get Hovey and Buchanan back, which looks like there's a good chance both of them will be back this week. It's not for sure, but I think it's heading that direction if we don't have any setbacks, which would be huge. And then no one else. It wasn't. It was a physical game, but it wasn't. We weren't we weren't getting beat up, you know. I, I, our defensive guys came out in pretty good shape. They were they were at times taking the battle to Wisconsin. So it wasn't your typical hey they rush for four hundred yards and they pound you in submission and we're pancaking in your. We weren't we weren't that sore after the game. From that standpoint, we held up pretty good. 
Is, is that an indication or a, another indication of the conditioning that you've focused on, you know, since you've been here, that you come out of a game like that yeah, relatively think, unscathed? Yeah, I think we're getting stronger, but obviously from an offensive standpoint, we got a good idea of we got to get a lot stronger. We're not, we, we, didn't, we couldn't physically match up to their guys they had up front. I mean, anybody that watched the game could see we couldn't. Backs had no time. Quarterbacks had no time, you know, so – we, we have to get physically stronger. I thought defensive guys held up a lot better, and I think if you looked at our weight room strength levels, our defense is a lot stronger in the trenches than our offense. A lot of it has to do with we have a lot of older defensive guys, and we have a lot of really young offensive linemen that are playing. Sam McCollum, you know, has been here for two weeks, and he's trying to battle against Wisconsin. Sam McCollum's going to be a great player here. It would be great if we could have redshirted him, but we're not in a position yet where we still got to play young guys at positions that they're probably not ready to do. So, um, that being said, it's still a great experience for those guys. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm glad Sam McCollum got to play 45 snaps or 50 snaps against Wisconsin. He's going to be better for it down the road. He's, you know, he's a, probably a little beat up and a little mentally bruised eight, but Sam's going to be fine. Sam's a tough kid, and he's going to be a great player here. So that's the positive. Everybody's like – thinks it's the end of the world. At the end of the day, we're one and one. We probably should have beat Presbyterian. We'd be Presbyterian. We probably shouldn't be Wisconsin. We didn't be Wisconsin. So is there a lot to be learned from both games? Yeah. Is there a lot to learn and work on from both games? Yeah. Are we one and one heading in Cincinnati? We probably would have taken that at the beginning of the year. The positive too is all the young guys that are getting experience. Billy Ball played a ton. You know, did he play great? No, he didn't play great. It's his first ever college game at Camp Randall Stadium under a lot of duress. So I'd like to see somebody that could play. But he also made a bunch of plays, probably more plays than he should have made. Our young running backs played. We, Chris Hudson continues to play. We had young offensive linemen play. Defensively, we had a crazy amount. I mean, like I said, we had seven true freshmen on the field at one time, and we were doing okay. Like, we didn't really know what we were doing out there, but we were flying around hitting people, and a number of those kids made plays. A number of those kids didn't make plays, and they're going to watch the tape today and learn from both sides of it. And for me, I've been saying all along, we, I know no one else, everybody wants to think we're way further than we are, and I know there's a lot of excitement about our program, and I'm glad everybody's excited. And I'm excited about our program, but I know we got a three-game juggernaut in Wisconsin, Cincinnati, and Western Kentucky. It's, you know, they were a 33-point favorite for a reason, you know. And Cincinnati's going to be a big favorite this week, and Western Kentucky's going to be, and we got to keep getting better through this grind, and I'm not saying we can't win one of the next two. We're going to. We're going to go out and play our tails off and try to win the game, but we're also going to keep growing our team and moving forward and, and trying to prepare for conference play where it's going to be more of a level playing field. I watched Cincinnati play Ohio State last year, and it was a dang good football game. you know. And they had receivers running by Ohio State's DBs for 70, 80, 90-yard touchdowns, and that's hard to do. I watch Ohio State play a lot, and they don't give up a lot of points. And they've got running backs, and they've got skill and world. Have we greatly improved our skill? Yes, we've greatly improved our skill. Have we improved it to the level that we have Cincinnati skill? It's not. No, it's not close. We're going to be up against it to stay with their guys just like we were up against it last year. But we hung in there last year and made it a pretty good game because we played smart football and we executed pretty good. That's how we hung in there. And if we don't, if we don't execute better than we did the first two weeks, Cincinnati's going to hang about 50 on us. You know, if we can execute better, I think it can be a pretty competitive football game. Coach, what do you? You were here last year. Obviously, the first time you kind of been a part of this rivalry. Uh, where does that, where does this rivalry rank in your book? It's just similar to all rivalries are all rabid on both sides. I, you know, I think, you know, that there's a lot of people because of proximity that have people on both sides. I know a lot of Miami parents that have kids that went to Miami, but have kids that went to UC. And I know husbands and wives that one went there and one went here. So that's what makes it pretty cool is when you, when you have so many, much like us in OU, there's a lot of people that have ties to both places within the same household. It makes it a pretty fun rivalry when you get siblings and, and husbands and wives arguing and wearing different T-shirts. So the, to me, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool rivalry. Obviously, uh, from, from our standpoint, we're more less concerned about the rivalry. We're more concerned with playing better football and executing better and, and, and putting, putting our kids in the best chance for success, but then our kids making good decisions and playing the game the way it's supposed to be played. You mentioned the pretty cool rivalry and the households and everything. Have you ever been involved uh, in a rivalry like that anywhere that you've yeah, been? Yeah, they're all similar. I mean, all rivalries are the same. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what level. There's there's always a rival. It's typically the closest school by, and it's usually similar that there's a lot of ties to both schools, and that's just – I mean, I've had it when I was in Division Three. I had it when I was in Division Two. I had it when I was at Notre Dame that – 
there's, there's, there's people divided. So rivalries are awesome. That's what makes great about college football. You don't really get those types of rivalries in, in professional sports. Yeah, there's some good rivalries, but it's not the same as these college rivalries. So that's what makes college sports so exciting and makes these games so much more fun because there's just more at stake because more people care about them.